What's up everybody, this is Steve Sterling with Sentinel17 Gaming. Thank you so much for joining me for this video, I greatly appreciate it. Just so you know, this is the longer video for The Last of Us Part 2. The shorter one is already available on my YouTube channel. Feel free to check that out. So, with The Last of Us Part 2, there were a number of things that I wanted to discuss, and of course, you need more time to really get into those, and that's what I wanted to do in this video. A big reason, I think, for myself making this video is I've seen a lot of contention and division that has been coming about, especially since the leaks regarding The Last of Us Part Two and its um, story arc came out. And a lot of people who are making assumptions about this game haven't played it themselves. I wanted to take the time to really play this game and just to see the reality of the situation, you know, is Neil Druckmann a genius, is he a charlatan, I wanted to see what the situation was, so I spent the weekend and I played through it, and like I said before, this is slightly longer, it's not going to be longer than 10 minutes, um, but if you are looking for the shorter review, I also have that up. With that being said, um, the biggest, one of the biggest issues a lot of people have with The Last of Us Part Two is that you have to spend half the game playing as Abby. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, well, if you've played The Last of Us Part 1, the doctor that was performing the surgery that you have to kill in order to rescue Ellie is the father of Abby. Now, it never showed Abby in The Last of Us Part 1, which, of course, indicates that she was pretty much... Um, they came up with the idea for her after The Last of Us Part 1 was out the door and they were probably thinking, hey, how can we uh, make The Last of Us Part 2? What type of storyline are we going to have? And, of course, they came up with the idea for Abby. Now, while Ellie is a scavenger, Abby is a soldier. And she's pretty much been training for four entire years to kill Joel. Now, a lot of the rumored leaks beforehand and said, oh, she's transgender, but Abby isn't transgender. She's just a female that has been lifting a lot of weights. And as they show in one section of the game, when you're playing as her, right outside her living quarters, there is an extensive weight room. And if someone's driven by rage and they want nothing but revenge um, and they have a weight room right outside their room, what do you think they're going to do? So it makes sense in that context. I think... A lot of people jump to conclusions with this game, and there is a transgender character in here that ironically was not well received by the transgender community, and that's I'm not even going to get into that in this video. I'm just going to say that um, a lot of what Neil Druckmann tried to do in this game was not well received by everybody. It was definitely a point of contention for quite a few people, and you even had like the voice actors... Um, I know Troy Baker was one of them who went out of his way to tell people to keep an open mind about this game and to give it a chance. And I think that was good of him, but that also was an indicator that they knew there was trouble in paradise, so to speak. Um, when I say trouble in paradise, I mean that you have this franchise that's phenomenal, that everybody's looking forward to for years, The Last of Us Part Two, and you know that the storyline is going to anger some fans to the point where they are going to be almost hostile. And, I mean, I see how some people can get like that. With this game, I completely understand it. I think it makes a lot of sense how some people are just outraged by this game. And because it's because The Last of Us Part 1 was Ellie and Joel. It was their story. And then you take The Last of Us Part 2... And within the first 15 minutes of the game, maybe maybe first half hour of the game, uh, Joel gets killed, you know, and he completely just gets destroyed. And then they want characters to sympathize with the person who killed him, say, hey, she was only driven by revenge. It's good from a storyline perspective, but unfortunately, it leans too heavily on what's known as a Greek tragedy. And a lot of American audiences, most modern audiences are not familiar with the whole concept of a Greek tragedy. This is ironically an American tragedy. And basically where there is no good ending, they used Joel to drive this story 
and a lot of people just feel like his treatment in this is almost blasphemous to the Last of Us franchise. So with that being said comes the next question. Is this game deserving of Game of the Year 2020? Well, the critics are going to are going to vote for it to be Game of the Year, you know. Um they're going to say hands down without a doubt. There's no question. If the gamers decided, I would say it would be a hell of a lot tougher because I would be willing to bet probably about 50% of the gamers will love it, will say yes. Probably about 25 to 30 will say no, hell no, and then the rest will be in the middle. It will be interesting, to say the least, to see where Naughty Dog goes after this, because while they could write blank checks before, after the divisive nature of this game, I don't think that's necessarily the case with a lot of gamers. Another aspect of this that is worth bringing up is prior to The Last of Us Part Two and all the leaks that surrounded it, it was pretty much in ND we trust. And ND, of course, standing for both Neil Druckmann and Naughty Dog. People said he knows what he's doing, he is a creative genius, blah, blah, blah. This game has been divisive. So now what that means is their next game, which the running title is Stray Cross. It was actually listed in a in an article a couple years ago. Stray Cross, that's probably not going to be what the game is called, but from this point on, if Neil Druckmann is attached, you're automatically going to have people skeptical of it, and that might hurt the sales. Who knows? Who knows where that's going to go? Um, they might have faith in it, they might not, but from this point on, The Last of Us Part Two being so divisive is going to, well, it's going to be interesting to see how Sony handles this, because the Last of Us Part Two is not bad, but all of the negative publicity surrounding it, I think, might impact it more than they have anticipated. And that will be interesting to watch over the next few years. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for checking it out. I greatly appreciate it. Feel free also to check out my other video on The Last of Us Part Two. This is Steve Sterling with Sentinel17Gaming. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Sentinel17.